Welcome to the bottom of the rabbit hole. Salute to all the subscribers tuning in. You are appreciated. In this video, we're going to talk about Dr. Cornell West and his battle with Harvard University. So if this is your first time down here or you want to know about everything related to the matrix, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you do not miss out on any yellow pilled content. This topic was requested over on Twitter and shout out to everyone who has been sending in stories because fans like you have truly made Matrix University the reliable source it is today. Dr. Cornell West not only made a cameo as Counselor West in the Matrix Reloaded and Revolutions, but he is also on the short list of philosophers still alive today whose works were in some ways influential to themes presented in the Matrix franchise. Dr. West and Ken Wilber also provided the in-depth philosophical commentary featured in the Ultimate Matrix Collection. Let's jump right into this article titled, Cornell West Threatens to Leave Harvard Again. The article says, quote, Harvard University professor Cornell West, the well-known philosopher, progressive political activist, and outspoken social critic, is threatening to leave Harvard University after he said the administration disrespected him by denying his request to be considered for tenure. West, who was born in Tulsa, Oklahoma, has long been a provocative figure in academia and involved in outside pursuits. He appeared in two Matrix films and has made several spoken word and hip hop albums. West initially supported Barack Obama for president in 08, but later became an outspoken critic of Obama's stances on Israel and the Wall Street bailout. West earned his undergraduate degree from Harvard in 1973, received a PhD from Princeton University, and returned to Harvard to teach in 1994. End quote. I'll leave a link to the full Boston Globe article in the description for anyone who wants to know more details about this dispute. But I chose this article specifically because Dr. West himself replied to it on Twitter saying, quote, Is Harvard a place for a free black man like myself whose Christian faith and witness put equal value on Palestinian and Jewish babies like all babies and reject all occupations as immoral? After being tenured at Yale, Harvard, Princeton and Union Theological Seminary, the recent Harvard denial of a tenure process strikes me as a political decision I reject. Nothing stands in the way of my profound love for and solidarity with oppressed peoples wherever they are. End quote. Now, in the second part of his tweet, he states that he was tenured at Harvard, which can be confusing. But in 2001, the president of Harvard got into a dispute with Dr. West that led to his departure in 2002, where he then joined the faculty at Princeton. When West returned to Harvard in 2017, he was appointed a non-tenured position. During 2019 and early 2020, Dr. West was traveling the country as co-chairman for Senator Bernie Sanders' presidential campaign. But that wasn't the reason that he was denied tenure. And reading in between the lines of this tweet, it appears to be yet another Gina Carano situation. Of course, that is my own speculation, but let's hear what Counselor West has to say. We have to be just as vigilant in terms of accountability, answerability, responsibility when it comes to Biden and Harris, when it comes to the administration of the establishment of the Democratic Party, because we know it's tied to Wall Street. We know it's tied to militarism. We know that it doesn't want to hit mass incarceration. We know it doesn't want to hit the situation, the plight and predicament of working people so that Wall Street is still very much in the driver's seat of the Democratic Party, just as it was very much in the driver's seat of the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. We're looking for what do ordinary people, everyday people, working people of all colors, all genders, all sexual orientation, all regions, what will we have and that's the fundamental question but that's what you have been highlighting year after year after year and i salute you for it man i really do it just means you know you're gonna be misconstrued misunderstood attacked character assassination and so forth i mean i say join the club you know I'm, <laughs> they've been coming at me for decades after decades you got a smile on your face i got a smile on my face because when you're fighting for something bigger than just the next party election or the next position in the establishment then you got a different kind of freedom, man. Eh? Different kind of freedom. America needs more free brothers and sisters of all colors. And it's often been the artists who've been the vanguard in that regard, the musicians and, and, and the comic artists. But we need free folk across the board if this democratic project is going to sustain itself, given the very ugly, not just neoliberal, but predatory capitalist and imperial foreign policy in place. I'm talking about that high, thick form of militarism that comes out of the Pentagon, and I don't care what color the head of the Pentagon is, we're talking about moral issues mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. For me, as a revolutionary Christian, we're talking about spiritual issues. Human beings being sacred, no matter what country, no matter what color, no matter what gender, sexual orientation they are. Jesus was crucified because he ran out the money chains. What was the temple? It was the largest edifice this side of Rome. It was a bank. They had police on the one side. For us, it has to do with Wall Street, White House, Pentagon, Hollywood, Harvard, Yale, University of Chicago, all of the elite institutions that accommodate themselves to an unjust status quo. Now, there's individuals inside of those institutions. Because, see, you know, as a Christian, you always recognize every human being is made in the image of God, and therefore they can choose to go another way. You can be a member of the elite and choose to be in solidarity with everyday people. You know, you can be a white brother and choose to be in solidarity with the black freedom movement. I can be a, a, a male straight. I choose to be in solidarity with my precious trans folk. Those are moral and spiritual choices people make. But generally speaking, the dominant tendency of an establishment when it comes to elite sites, Jesus understood that. Well, being part of it is a complicated issue. I mean, the problem is the United States is such an uh, anti-intellectual culture. And so to to opt to be an intellectual means you're going to be full of a lot of anxieties and even self-doubts of how you fit in. And so the question becomes then, in order to deal with those anxieties, a lot of intellectuals create little silos that reinforce an elitism, that reinforce an arrogance and a haughtiness and a condescension toward ordinary people. But that's a sign of their insecurity. I'm trying to generate a little bit of sympathy for the intellectuals, because you see in America, Americans love, we love intelligence because it generates big cash. But we don't like intellect because intellect raises questions about the basic assumptions of a system. It doesn't just try to fit in the system. Intelligence is tied to success, making it in the system. Intellect, sitting back, raises issues about the system and says, wait a minute, there's an injustice here. There's a deep unfairness here. There's a willful ignorance here. There is a callousness here. There's an indifference here. Rabbi Heschel taught us what? Indifference to evil is more evil than evil itself. Because in, indifference to evil creates a whole way of being, a whole way of looking at the world so you actually don't ever get a chance to see the degree to which you are accommodating to a status quo. That's a different kind of thing. It, 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 it reinforces the illusion that somehow you such a force for good. No. We don't want simulacra. We don't want copies. We want the real thing. Don't forget to order your Matrix University gear at our Teespring shop. And remember, as one realizes that one is a dream figure in another person's dream, that is self-awareness.